We've got some breaking news here on CBS Sports HQ where Tiger Woods has just finished his round at the old course at St. Andrews, and it is expected that Tiger Woods will miss the cut at the Open Championship at nine over par. Tiger did have a better day today than he did in his opening round on Thursday. On Thursday, he was six over par. Today, three over par, including bogeys on four, six, and a double on 16. Tiger did have an opportunity uh, for a birdie putt there on 18, but it lipped out, settling for par. And again, Tiger walking Swilkin Bridge, taking off his cap, acknowledging the fans. Uh, did not pause on his way over the bridge, but did uh, take his time to acknowledge, of course, all the fans and fellow golfers that are on the course as he finished his day. All right, with reaction and insight, we've got Rick Gaiman, uh, host of the First Cut podcast and, of course, Sportsline. So, Rick, uh, we're all watching it unfold at the end there, which is, of course, likely Tiger Woods' end of his tournament. What continues to stand out to you? What emotions do you have flowing through you right now? Yeah, there's certainly a lot to unravel here, Tommy. I think if we would have gone back uh, a year or six months, we would have probably pointed out the old course at St. Andrews for Tiger's return to golf after uh, the car accident that, that he went through and all the uh, subsequent surgeries and procedures and, and rehabilitation. And the fact that he's already played two major championships up until this point uh, was probably surprising in itself. And, and Tiger did not have a good week by any stretch of the imagination. He uh, begins his week making a double bogey on number one. He, as you mentioned, lips out a birdie putt on number 18 here in a second round. There's just nothing good in, in between. But uh, if you continue to look at this from a, a larger perspective, you know, Tiger walking over uh, Swolken Bridge, not pausing, uh, meaning he is certainly not retiring. But I think we all know that, um, you know, this is the last time that we're going to see him in any sort of competitive form at the old course. You know, the, the future Open Championship venues have already been decided uh, at least until 2025. Tiger has acknowledged this himself, and you could actually see him getting a little emotional and a little teary-eyed as he walked up uh, the 18th fairway to the ovations from the crowd. So this is obviously a moment in time for, for our game and for Tiger himself, knowing that uh, this is probably the last time he's remotely competitive in an Open Championship at St. Andrews. He played three of the four majors this calendar year, made the cut of the Masters, made the cut of the PGA Championship before withdrawing. What went wrong for him this week that he was doing so well the other two occasions that he was able to make it to the weekend? Yeah, from a strictly golf perspective, this was probably the most shocking result that we've gotten from Tiger in a major championship this year because he had played so many practice holes in anticipation in the lead up in the first uh, final couple days before this tournament started earlier in this week. And the thing that went wrong, Tommy, is, is he had just zero control with his putter. His, his pacing, his distance control was abysmal. And when you have greens as large as they do at the old course, uh, seven double greens, so they're absolutely massive. And Tiger has told us himself over the years that lag putting and having that speed control with the flat stick is so critical. When you lose that, it, it's just a, an uphill battle all week long. And that's what that's what Tiger faced. So if he could go back and find um, some better speed with the flat stick, I think we would have had a, a much different result. And it, and it is surprising considering how much work he got in on and around these greens in the days before the tournament started. Through this, <clears throat> pardon me, through this calendar year, we've learned sort of what it takes for Tiger to get ready for a tournament, to stay in shape, and to be ready to contend in a tournament. So Moving forward, when we take a look at the major championship calendar, we know that Augusta National certainly fits him first major of the year. He knows it so well. But but moving on to the PGA Championship change of venues, then the U.S. Open, which is going to be in Southern California, and then the Open Championship, which is also changing venues. Rick, what do you anticipate tune-ups for Tiger will look like as he tries to prepare and maybe snipe at some of these majors in the 23 schedule? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I suppose the good news for Tiger is he does have nine months to get ready for Augusta National. We have to remember he is still very much in active rehabilitation on the leg and the back and every other ailment that comes up along the way at this point in Tiger's career. So that that's the most logical uh, next important event is when we get to the Masters. But I imagine you're going to see Tiger play some of these quasi-competitive events uh, in the next couple of months or in the months leading up to Augusta National. Things I'm thinking about like the Hero World Challenge or the PNC Championship teeing it up with his son Charlie again. Maybe he gets 
uh, an event or two in on the PGA Tour as the calendar turns, just to kind of keep those competitive juices flowing. But uh, we know there, there's there's only so much kind of left in the tank, and Tiger has acknowledged that himself. He's not going to play the week before these major championships. It's unlikely that he plays an event that would be particularly grueling on him in the lead up to some of these events. So I, I suspect it's going to be those one-off, uh, you know, kind of Hero World Challenge, PNC Championship type events, and then. We're going to see him uh, the first full week of April at Augusta National. We're live, of course, minutes after Tiger finished his round. If you were along with our guy Kyle Porter in the pressure to ask one question for Tiger, Rick, what would that be? I, I would just ask him um, what he thought went wrong this week. And I, and I think Tiger at this point in his career has gotten – um, very human. I mean, quite honestly, there was a 20 year stretch where it was hard to tell whether this guy was human uh, from the physical things he was able to do on the golf course and, and the emotional side. Uh, but he's gotten much more open about his answers. And, and I, I think he really understood that this was going to be a great chance for him to contend and compete at the home of golf, a place that he has described as his favorite golf course on earth. And I would like to kind of hear his raw thoughts on what happened to lead to an, uh, a place where he finishes two rounds at, at nine over par and how he is going to put that into perspective moving forward. I'm glad you brought that up because if we had a Max Homa in like 2005, I don't know if he'd be tweeting out such nice things about Tiger being excited to play with him. But you're right, we're seeing a, a different Tiger in his return, uh, much a more jovial one as well on and off the course. Rick Gaiman breaking it down. Again, the breaking news for Tiger Woods, nine over par at the 150th Open Championship at St. Andrews. One more look at Tiger's scorecard. Uh, was trying to get some momentum as, as it was six over par on Thursday. Did so on three, but then found trouble in four and six, and then that double bogey on 16. So again, for Tiger Woods, uh, all likelihood not going to make the cut, of course, getting ready for this weekend. Not going to be a part of that. First Cut Podcast, the guys will have you covered. Of course, uh, Rick, Kyle, Mark, Immelman, Greg Ducharme, the coach, and a whole lot more, not just for, of course, this major championship, but every tournament in all year long. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game, the highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics? Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.